Good evening, and welcome to the Poetry Hour. I'll begin with a few uh, new poems um, from my forthcoming book, which should be out later this year. Bitter Gird. How many of you like Karela? OK. <laughs> OK. Bitter Gird. A glass of bitterness goes well with age. Get on with it. Drink it every day. Keep your head bored. Each time the world hits you, survive the blow. Even if justice is served, it will be bitter. It will remind you to lie low. The next couple of poems were inspired by uh, forced time spent at home during the pandemic. Um, maybe a kind of uh, angst that came out of all the household chores that one had to do. And forced time with the spouse, who is also here, by the way. <laughs> cleaning the house. Saturdays are for cleaning and writing. I begin without map or warning, moving in circles, gathering dust and dirt, a week's cobweb gobbling more than spiders. Sometimes I return to the same spot, sweep under the dining table, pick up nothing. I sprinkle some dust. Floors need footprints. Furniture needs proof of life. So I wipe them clean, except for the coffee mug stains. Spotless is lifeless. I must write, too, as ideas settle on the corner coffee table. The broom, the dusting cloth, and mop fit beautifully in my hands. Their hold is real. Their hold is real, much more than words that reveal. What you don't know. You think you can stun me to sleep, shun my words and hold me down? What you don't know is I'm an ax. Planning dinner. There's batter in the fridge anyway, enough to last a week or two. Idlis are great, but too cumbersome. Their molds pile, grate in the sink, steel scrubs, screams shrill. Soft mounds turn surly at the end. Idlis are not as easy as you think. Supple, warm, plump. They soak up sambar only if they ferment as long as swear words that linger unsaid, unheard in the tap water, now gushing loud, loud enough for the neighbors to know it's idlis for dinner. So no idlis tonight. Let's settle for dosha. Let's go round and round, leave a sizzle here, a dribble there. Crisp enough for you? If all poetry is protest. If all poetry is protest, I protest poetry. This word that could have been blood home, privacy, hate, wound, gun, identity, freedom, heresy. I protest metaphors of love, dark alleyways where a woman could have been screaming dissent, tongue untied. If all poetry is protest, I protest ordinary longings. 
lines that could be wrinkles gathered over years of silence on a face I know well. I protest sentiment where should have been a question, why do I write? I'm moving on to a few poems uh, from my uh, novel, which came out last year. It's called C. Um, it's, a, it's a novel that also has poetry as part of its narrative. This is a love poem. Missing. You don't need to talk to me every now and then to let me know your love doesn't change with the season. Your strength lies in your silence and my weakness in my demands. So though I say, don't break my heart and you panic, you just might, you won't. Because like the window that opens to perpetual sunrise and seagulls, you will always fill my room with light. This darkness is temporary, this missing very ordinary, and I never settle for anything plain. When all else fails, there's nothing left to talk about. Candles are all out. Rice has stopped growing. Rivers have stopped flowing. Nations are falling. The children are dying. No one left to follow. No one left to lead. There's no time for friends. Not enough hate to kill. Forget about passion. Faith is out of fashion. This is the right time to go out and unite. This is the right time to go out and fight. When all else fails, declare a bloody war. And finally, the scarcity principle. Once I told you I must apply the scarcity principle. The less I'm available, the more you'd seek me. The more I hide, the less you're likely to disappear, I said. Sparse as hair, scanty as God, sporadic as the monsoon, infrequent as sanity. If I could become scarce, then you would value me, I said. But love, why would you do that, you asked. Scarce or abundant, it's not quantity that matters. It's quality, remember? Damn it, I hate it when you're right. Thank you. Since I also have the wonderful uh, responsibility of moderating the session, I now invite Roli to come and read her wonderful poems to us. Thank you. Good evening. So I'm going to recite three poems. The first one is spiritual, the second one is reflective, and the third is, um, I leave it to you, we'll come to that. So um, since I think we come to planet Earth, all of us human beings feel incomplete, and the soul is always searching for something. Whether it is self-realization or seeking the divine, I think the search is on, the search is on to always make ourselves feel more complete. This poem is about this. A call to Krishna, longing of the soul. Krishna, 
The dark night reminds me of you, moon cresting like your peacock feather. The deep blue of the placid ocean is you, with mysteries that draw me forever. The blue lotus and its fragrance I dream of is you, haunting but always so eluding. The chill of the winter morn is you, as mist gathers over mountains brooding. You are there in the clouds on a rainy day, raindrops slipping away outright. Like time running through my fingers as I foolishly try to hold it tight. The blue of midnight brings longing for love and all things lost. Then comes solace in the morning, sun rising, darkness fading fast. For grief and joy are secretly together so intertwined Rainbows are always there to seize. They are found in the heart and mind. You smile in my music sometimes. I cling to your finger so tight. Though you swirl me around in gay abandon, I know that things will be all right. Keep me close, keep me close, O Krishna, as this life ecstasy rips me apart. Then piece me together back tenderly, for I am a part of your heart. Thank you. The second one is about dreams. We all dream, but facing the vagaries of life, sometimes we quietly decide to bury our dreams and forget about them. But dreams don't die. So this is about dreams. For dreams don't die. They sizzle on lonely nights, turning over and over like a stuck song of old on my lips. Some days they float aimlessly like balloons in the summer sky, tantalizingly close but always out of reach. As lamplight puts fuzzy golden fingers on window panes, like honey trickling down my throat, they stay. And I crave, willing them to stay. They hover like the innocent smile of the child with eyes like sparkling stars Merrily teasing, but always so far. They go round and round me, like that turn around, so fast I forget where they began and where ended. Then, when I least expect and weary turn around, after holding on so long, heartbreaking, they burst like bubbles all around my head, hissing out like champagne after the cork has flown, drenching me completely. They weave silken strands of gossamer around my soul and bind it back piece by piece and pull me up again. For dreams don't die. They live in us, buried deep in our hearts and rise when it is time. Yes, dreams don't die. Thank you. And as we all know, there have always been forces opposing the truth, love and light. So this is an extremely short poem, but I just felt like reciting it for you here today. So here it is. It is called, Could They Ever? On my last sojourn to Greece, I saw the prison of Socrates. He stood for the truth like a rock. Could they really kill him by giving him luck? Could they lock away love 
in forbidding towers so tall or stop the beating of hearts was it possible at all could they cover raw talent with a dark thick shroud could they ever really stop a bird from singing aloud could they ever stop the sun rays the moon and the stars from spreading the light both near and afar could they hush the lark in song or stop its flight midway could they stop the tide of the ocean from making its mighty way or stop the mountains from rising could they really ever for you can kill the truth but die it will never thank you very much thank you Thank you so much. Um, could we have Frank next? Hi, Frank, thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Frank Baez. I'm from the Dominican Republic. So happy to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm really nervous. It's my first time here in India reading and reading with these beautiful ladies. It's like, it's kind of hard. So um, I'm going to read a couple of poems. I, I write in Spanish, that's my uh, mother tongue. Um, and I had this translation, probably, if you don't understand the points, you can get the book and you will comprehend everything. And okay, I want to, to read a couple of points. Um, this is uh, dedicated to my father. He, he passed away like five years ago. If you were here, you tell me it would be better to dedicate the poem to another person, but I will insist and then you will ask for it to be brief, to write a haiku or song, such a scene, that I shouldn't burden myself by writing to you that there are people, heroes, cities, landscapes, animals, to whom no one dedicates a poem, to which I will respond, I don't care, I want to write about you, and then you will mention historical figures, commemorations, floods, massacres, Coops, civilizations, planets, landscapes, etc., etc., etc. If you were here, I would have to dedicate a poem to the clouds or the sea, as if they were you. If you were here, I wouldn't write to you. Um, so, oh. Okay, um, and this one is called, um, I mean, you can read it in the screen, like a karaoke, and I'm going to read the poem in Spanish, in the original, so you can catch the reading and all that. Breve conversación con el mar Caribe. Te cuento que el otro día conocí al mar Mediterráneo y fue un poco como conocer un actor olvidado. Caminé por el malecón oyendo sus olas que sonaban como la tos de un Joe Pesci asmático. Aunque más que un actor olvidado, el mar recordaba las momias que exhiben en el Museo del Cairo. Nada que ver contigo, mar Caribe, que esta tarde tienes tanto vigor que parece que vienes del gimnasio. No sé si te prefiero cuando te tiendes manso y reposas como un león en medio de la pradera o cuando te enfureces y ruges e intentas sodomizar la costa a la manera de Marlon Brando en el último tango en París. Los pelícanos y las gaviotas se te escurren de los dedos cuando intentas atraparlos. Es como si quisieras salirte del lecho, pero tus cadenas te sostienen con tanta fuerza que no te queda de otra que gritar y despotricar, di la verdad. No te molestan los cruceros con ancianos y toda esa basura 
que te arrojamos, te hemos envenenado, contaminado. El año pasado tus costas tenían tantas algas que parecía que en nuestras playas un turista te contagió la sífilis. Yo me dije, esto se ve feo y me pregunté si este no era el fin. Pero en vez de mandar un tsunami y desquitarte de nuestras ciudades y borrar del mapa a Miami, volviste a pasar tu rebaño de olas que balaban en paz y en armonía a lo largo y ancho de la costa. ¿Qué más te digo? Eres el mar de mi infancia. Me he pasado la vida descifrando tus palabras. Ambos hemos envejecido, pero a pesar del paso del tiempo, sigo viniendo a este arrecife a conversar contigo con la misma inocencia de cuando era niño y paseando por tus playas recogí una caracola y me la llevé al oído y tú me hablaste por primera vez. Yeah, it's a point about the, the, the Caribbean Sea that's really important in the area. Um, and I'm going to read another one in English. Um, this one is called, Last night I dreamt I was a DJ. I called Miguel on the phone and asked him if he think I will be better off as a DJ or as a poet. And Miguel answered, as a poet. My girlfriend also says poet. My girlfriend brother says poet. And the chick I met when she was in line behind me at the movies said DJ. Girls tend to see me more as a DJ, while the women shopping at supermarkets said that I should stick with the poems. My mother says poet. The plumber says poet. The five poets I know all say I better be off as a DJ. My sister abstained from voting. I went to see DJ Tiesto, and a girl grabbed my hand and said that DJs are creatures of God. They are angels, she said. And while she was talking, I imagined all the DJs with their tone tables flying around God like mosquitoes, and God shooing them away with his hand. But the question is whether the poets and the DJs can be reconciled, if they can be one. Wait, 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 wait. If it's possible to write poems with one hand and with the other scratch records, if it's possible to be half poet, half DJ, to be a poet about the waves and below the waves a DJ, or vice versa, or maybe during a full moon, a poet could transform into a DJ. <laughs> or maybe I'm complicating everything, and the fact is every DJ wants to be a poet, and every poet wants to be a DJ. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. yeah. There's a legend in which a DJ and a poet fall into a well. They shout and shout until a man appears and throws down a rope. The DJ clamps up fierce, but when they throw the rope back to the poet, he screams, lead me down here. And the man and the DJ do so. They wait in silence for a little while, and then they leave. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Frank. I think we can all be poet DJs. Yeah. Or DJ poets, okay. Yes, so Meena Kandasamy, everyone. Um, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be reading from my translation of the Kamatipal, of the Tirukural. Um, so I'll read in Tamil and English both. Um, so we're going to start with Ninaintavar um, Pulambal, The Lament of Memory. Ullinum tira permagul seidalal kaldinum kama minidu. Sex is sweeter than wine, causing a ceaseless rapture, even when it's not present, for mere memory intoxicates. Yenatundri inide kan kamam dam birwar, ninaipavaruadundri il. Sex is sweeter than everything else, mere thought of my lover, and everything else disappears. 
நினைப்பவர் போன்று நினையார்கொள் தும்மல் சினைப்பது போன்று கெடும் ஹி பிரிட்டன் டு திங்க் ஆஃப் மீ பட் ஹி டிட் நாட் ஐ வாஸ் அபவுட் டு ஸ்னீஸ் பட் ஐ குட் நாட் யாமும் உலேன்கோள் அவர் நெஞ்சத்து என் நெஞ்சத்து ஓ ஓ உலரே அவர் Do I exist in his heart? Oh, he fills up all my heart. Tham nenjithu emmai kadikondar, nanarkol em nenjithu ova varal. He has a strict guard banning my entry into his heart. Isn't he shameless then to constantly walk into mine? Matriyan ennullen mannu, avarudiyan uttranal ulla ulen. I stay alive recollecting those days I spent together with him how else could i live marappin yavanavan markol marappariyen ullinum ullam sudum what would happen if i were to forget i know not forgetting memory burns my heart yenait ninupinum kaayar anaitondro kaadalar seiyum sirappu it does not matter how or how often i think of him he does not get upset isn't this my lover's speciality viliyum en innu yer verallam en bar aliyin my art ninaithu my dear life drains away when i think of the heartlessness of the man who used to say we are one life vidadu sendrarai kanninal kaana padadi vaalimadi live long shine on the moon until i see with my own eyes the lover who left me the lover who never left my heart uh this is the next this is another chapter so these are literally 2000 year old poems from the tamil and a word for love is the same a heart for a word for heart is the same a word for you know <laughs> it's just remained so contemporary nenjudu kilathal so it means my heart my traitor she's fighting with her own heart ninai thondru sollayo nenjai enai thondrum evvo noi theerkum marundu think and tell me something my heart of anything anything that will cure this incurable disease காதல் அவரிலராக நீ நோவது பேதைமை வாழி என் நெஞ்சி வென் ஹீ லேக்ஸ் லவ் இட்ஸ் ஃபூலிஷ்னஸ் ஃபார் யூ டு பி இன் பெயின் மை டியர் ஹார்ட் ஜஸ்ட் லிவ் லாங் அண்ட் ப்ராஸ்பர் இருந்துள்ள என் பரிதல் நெஞ்சே பரிந்துள்ள பைதல் நோய் செய்தார்க்கனில் வில் சிம்பத்தி கம் யோ வே மை ஹார்ட் ஃபார் சிட்டிங் ஹியர் இன் லவ் சிக்னஸ் வென் த ஒன் காசிங் த சேட் மெலடி இஸ் பிட்டிலஸ் கண்ணும் கொலச்சேரி நெஞ்சே இவ என்னை தின்னும் அவர் காணலுற்று டேக் மை ஐஸ் ஆல்சோ அலோங் வித் யூ டியர் ஹார்ட் தே டெவ மீ இன் த லாங்கிங் டு சி ஹிம் செற்றார் என கைவிடல் உண்டோ நெஞ்சே யா முற்றால் உராதவர் கேன் பி அபேண்டன் ஹிம் மை ஹார்ட் சேயிங் ஹிஸ் சேயிங் ஹீஸ் க்ரூவல் திஸ் மேன் வி லவ் ஹூ டசன்ட் லவ் அஸ் கலந்துணர்த்தும் காதலர் கண்டார் புலந்துணராய் பொய் காய்வு காய்வது என் நெஞ்சு வென் யூ மீட் த லவ் ஹூ குவெல்ஸ் ஆல் யூர் குவாரல்ஸ் பை மேக்கிங் லவ் மை ஹார்ட் ஃபெயினிங் ஸ்லைட் இஸ் சச் அ ஷாம் காமம் விடு ஒன்றோ நான் விடு நெஞ்சே யானோ பொரே நீ விரண்டு கிவ் அப் டிசையர் ஓ கிவ் அப் ஷேம் டியர் ஹார்ட் ஐ கேனாட் சஃபர் த போத் ஆஃப் தெம் பரிந்தவர் நல்கார் என்று ஏங்கி பிரிந்தவர் பின்செல் வாய் பெய்த என் நெஞ்சு ஹோப்பிங் இன் ஹிஸ் டிஃபென்ஸ் தட் ஹீ வில் ஷோ லவ் மை ஹார்ட் இஸ் அ ஃபூல் தட் ஃபாலோஸ் த மேன் ஹூ லெஃப்ட் மீ உள்ளத்தார் காதலர் உள்ளத்தார் காதலவராக உள்ளினி யாருழை சேரி என் நெஞ்சு த லவர் ரிசைட்ஸ் அண்ட் வித் இன் அண்ட் வைல் திஸ் இஸ் ஸோ மை ஹார்ட் ஹூ டு யூ திங்க் அபவுட் இன் சர்ச் ஆஃப் ஹூம் டு யூ கோ துன்னா துறந்தாரி நெஞ்சத்து உடையேமா இன்னும் இழத்தும் கவின் ஹீ ஹேஸ் டிசர்ட்டட் ஆஸ் ஹீ ஹேஸ் ரினான்ஸ்ட் அஸ் இஃப் ஐ கீப் இம் இன் மை ஹார்ட் ஐ வில் லூஸ் மை பியூட்சி ஈவன் மோர் ஸோ ஐம் ஜஸ்ட் கோயின் டு ரீட் அனதர் ஸ்மால் செக்ஷன் அண்ட் லீவ் இட் வித் தேட் ஸோ ஃபார்ட் ஆஃப் யூனோ 
the Tamil universe of love is, you know, picking up fights with your lover. So basically, there's this Tirukural that says, um, uh, you know, you have to quarrel, you have to make up, and then make love. These are the Udal, Unardal, Punardal, Ivai Kamam Kudi are petrifying. So this is a little bit about fighting with each other. Pulavi uh, Nunukam, also known as the subtleties of sulking. Penniyalar yellarum kannin podu unbar, nannen parathil nvarbe. Everyone with women is publicly feast their eyes, but I will not embrace your debauched chest. Udi irinde ma tumminar, yam tamme niduvar kenba karinde. We sat, we sulked, and we said nothing. He sneezed, knowing well that we would break our silence. We would bless him, saying, Long live. Kotupu sudinum kayum, uriti e kati e sudini rendre. I wear flowers fresh off trees. She burns. You wear this only to show off to some other woman. Yarinum kadalam yendre nan, udinal, yarinum, yarinum yendre. When I said, I loved her more than anyone else. She sulked, asking, then whom, then whom? I said, in this birth, we are inseparable. Tears welled up in her eyes. I said, in this birth, we are inseparable. Tears welled up in her eyes. I remembered you, I said. So that means you have forgotten me, she cried, and pulled herself away from embracing me. I sneezed, she blessed. Then erasing her blessings, blessings she wept. Which woman now thought of you, causing you to sneeze? I suppressed my sneeze. She cried, Are you hiding from me, that woman who is thinking of you? I pacify her. She burns. Is this how you do it with the others as well? I pacify her. She burns. Is this how you do it with the I long for her, I gaze at her, she burns. Who is that woman on your mind as you take in every part of me? Thank you. Thanks, Meena. Yes, Mukda, thank you. So we'll conclude with Mukda's reading, and if there is time, maybe if any of you have any questions for any of us, we'll see how that goes here. So very, very good evening to everyone. After a very, very bureaucratic introduction, I have graduated from writing Sarkari note sheets to writing a little bit of poetry. So I'll start with where Meena left lovers' quarrels. So this one is called, uh, I will be reading two poems in English and two in Hindi. So this one is called Silence. I bear your taunts as penance, you my absences, both in silence. Come, let us start a fight to end this unbearable, unnatural peace. But if you still believe in the power of silence, come, let us make love and drown our sins in a river of sweat silently. This one is in Hindi and it's dedicated to all women. It is not just a poem, it's also a wish that I've carried for the longest time. I have a fetish for old age, death, obituary, and these are the themes that I end up writing about. This one is from my forthcoming collection, which is being published by Vani, and it is called Sola Shringar. Mere marne ke baad, sampoon sanskar poon karna, Sola Shringar se meri akhri ichha ka maan rakhna, twacha par chandan ka lep, netro ka daan karna, mume tulsi aur ganga jal se vardaan dena, 
पर आंस हो सके तो मेरा दिल संभाल के रखना पर आंसुओं से मेरी आत्मा को बोझिल मत करना देह के परित्याग में मेरी डोली का साथ देना खाकसार से पुल चुन के आकाश में बिखेर देना मेरे आगमन का न्योता खुशी से रवाना करना मेरे मरने के बाद संपूर्ण संस्कार पूर्ण करना जननी की गोद में जननी की गोद में बेटी सदा पराई मेरे आंच अपने आंचल से मुझे आशीर्वाद देना मोह मत करना मोह मत करना न घबराना कन्यादान से अपने पिया के घर खुशी से विदा करना मैं पीछे मुड़कर देखूंगी मैं पीछे मुड़कर देखूंगी मेरे जाने के बाद अफसोस मत करना मेरे मरने के बाद संपूर्ण संस्कार पूर्ण करना रिवाज है पीहर आने का रिवाज है पीहर आने का मेरा इंतज़ार करना वादा करती हूँ वादा करती हूँ हर जन में तुम्हारी कोक से ममता का कर्ज चुकाऊंगी वादा करती हूँ हर जन में तुम्हारी कोक से ममता का कर्ज चुकाऊंगी धरती का बोझ कहलाने वाली धरती का बोझ कहलाने वाली फक्र से आसमां का उद्धार कर जाऊंगी बस मेरे बाद मेरे मरने के बाद संपूर्ण संस्कार पूर्ण करना मेरे मरने के बाद संपूर्ण संस्कार पूर्ण करना सो बिकॉज आई एम अ ब्यूरोक्रैट आई पिक अप स्टोरीज फ्रॉम पीपल एंड दिस वन इज अ स्टोरी इट इज अ कॉमन स्टोरी आई एम शो वी वॉल हर्ड इट बट आई हर्ड दिस फ्रॉम माई मेड एंड इट्स कॉल्ड ग्रेटफुली डेड राइट मी अ प्रिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर अ बैंक हार्ट बैंक बॉडी ही डिड नॉट हैव अ सोल आई हैव नो बैंक अकाउंट बोथ सेव्ड फ्रॉम बैंक मैन ही जस्ट लेफ्ट मी left me nothing at all to remember him gratefully gratefully dead with too much of idle drinking his odontic kisses did to me what a bottle opener does to a beer can thrust open left bleeding with seven aborted pregnancies emptied sucked down to the last drop now discarded and dry rest his surviving children did suckling on my breasts and penury cobwebs and cowards look for corners to hide mind were cluttered overcrowded with beer cans troubles existing and yet to come four cornered with none to call my own hide my pain or shame corners reek of his smell my stayed life labeled with his drink his drinking brawls and rantings made enemies of friends none came in aid of an inebriated hole or when the time came to dig one he was buried without mourners wreath or tears he deserved none my half nibbled and gnawed heart i left him buried alongside more to free myself from him completely than to keep him company even in his dying he took away the best part of me he left me huge debts like piles of scrap and discarded raddi he pawned my name and i bear his surname with its reputation still trailing revenant it has come to haunt me the goats have picked a corner too write me a prescription for bankrupt eyes mindful of absences bankrupt stomach with appetites mouths and morsels mot gauge worn out with drudgery retire in peace bundled in a corner of my house i sleep carelessly well deserved at last gratefully dead amongst the least he did for me and this last one 
is from the title of the book which is coming out hopefully uh, next month. It's called Kya Kahu Main, Main Kaun Hu? It's an introduction uh, to my own being. I'm still trying to figure out who I am. Kya Kahu Main, Main Kaun Hu? Ik Aag Se Janmi Hu? Ik Aag Me Jana Hai? Mitti Ki Zami Par Chalti Hu? Mitti Ke Kansi Hawa Me Urti Hu? Mitti Me Mil Jana Hai? Kya Kahu Main, Main Kaun Hu? ख्वाहिशों का पुलिंदा दिखती हूँ, खामोशी का चेहरा रखती हूँ, न माला जपती हूँ, न रोजा रखती हूँ, इबादत लबों पर सजदे में रहती हूँ, क्या कहूँ मैं, मैं कौन हूँ? भट्टी मर, भट्टी में तप कर पली हूँ, फौलादी इरादे रखती हूँ, मोम का सा दिल है, आँखों से बरसती हूँ, फिरती हूँ जगह जगह पर अपने में र क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ सितारों की चमक सोने की खनक वजूद पर मेरे जचती नहीं जो रंग तूने भरे हैं अपनी कुंची से वो रंग इस दुनिया के कहाँ मंजर सारे देखे देखूँ अब तुझको भी क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ नित दिन चलती हूँ हर सांस में बढ़ती हूँ नदी की भांति अविरल बहती हूँ समंदर सा ठहराव भी तेरी होकर अपनी भी कहाँ हूँ मैं क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ माला टूटेगी माला टूटेगी तो मोती मिलेंगे एक धागे से जुड़ी थी माँ की कोख में भी मोती बिखरेंगे तो धागा हाथ आएगा फिर से मोह जाएगा तू समाएगा क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ धरा में धार सी मीरा भी हूँ धरा में धार सी मीरा भी हूँ राधा भी शिव की आराध्य भी नाम से पार्वती का पर्याय भी शिव हूँ सत्य की खोज में भी क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ नाम काम जामा जाम सौ शब्दों में एक ओंकार भी ध्वनि हूँ प्रतिध्वनि भी छवि हूँ परछाई भी बिंदु हूँ निरंकार भी अर्थ अपने आराध्य की शून्य भी मैं संपूर्ण भी क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ जिज्ञासु भी जानकार भी अज्ञान हूँ पर अनजान नहीं शाश्वत हूँ क्योंकि नेस तो नाबूद से उठी हूँ पर क्या रखा है कुछ पाने में पर क्या रखा है कुछ पाने में पा पा कर खोया है खो खो के पाया है कल्याण तो बस बस के उजड़ने में कल्याण तो बस बस के उजड़ने में उजड़ के सवरने में क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ कण से ढेला कण से ढेला ढेले से मिट्टी मिट्टी से इमारत बने इमारत से खंडहर खंडहर खाक में मिले कुम्हार का पहिया निरंतर चले कुम्हार का पहिया निरंतर चले सब समय का फेरा है कोई कच्चा घड़ा कोई सुराही बने सब समय का फेरा है कोई कच्चा घड़ा कोई सुराही बने क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ क्या कहूँ मैं मैं कौन हूँ थैंक यू धन्यवाद Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think we have about two minutes left. If, if, uh, if any of you have any questions for any of us here, this would be a good time. Probably have time for one question. Yes. Could we get a mic? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. My question is directed towards these two beautiful ladies out there. Uh, your poetry was beyond words. I am stunned that how, I really want to ask you, like, how do you guys do that? Being in busy in such a uh, uh, packed schedule, how do you get that creative space to write down things and, you know, be out there and just 
be out there and tell everyone like what is going on in your head and just be unstoppable. I'm just so, so happy to see both of you here. Please tell us how you do it. Yeah, this is for Mukda and Roli, right? Yeah, yeah. okay. So. so first of all, thank you for the compliment. And I, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, so thanks for the compliment. And of course, um, uh, she'll speak for herself. But I think that uh, poetry is what keeps us, keeps me going. And this is my, um, uh, as, as you all say, it's the de-stress point for me. It's the high point for me. I, um, it just comes. I mean, when I'm sitting, even sometimes in a VC or video conference, or it, it strikes at the worst of moments, uh, there is something called uh, the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal when I'm sitting there. So it just happens. It's on the spur of the moment. And probably uh, uh, one has it in one's genes. Uh, I got it from my father. Uh, he was also in the income tax and he retired as uh, principal chief commissioner income tax. And uh, he never told us that he was such a great poet. After his death, uh, my mother found a huge sheaf of poems uh, in his locker. He had just pushed them behind, probably having four children and uh, a career. Uh, he never spoke to us about it. We just knew that he was very fond of poetry. So I think uh, maybe it's in my genes as well. Uh, and of course, Mukda will tell you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much to everyone for, uh, for your patience and your time listening and your time and effort that goes uh, in investing in poetry and coming here to listen to all of us. And thank you to all the fellow poets who've read. You really inspire us to write more. I think as Roli also said, poetry just happens. You, all you need to have your eyes open, your ears open to stories around you. And I think sen somewhere your sensibility and your sensitivity of the heart allows you to write uh, poetry. And I'm sure we are all poets somewhere. Some of us read, some of us write. That's probably the only difference. But all of us carry a very, very poetic, uh, lyrical heart, I believe. So if you're sensitive, uh, um, you know, as uh, the Ashtavakra Gita says, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And when the student is really ready, the teacher disappears. So I think poetry is like that. You have to be in readiness for things to, things to reach you. I think that's my answer. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to us all. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, but I think we'll all be around and our books are available. So please feel free to come up and say hello and drop a question if you like. Thank you. Thank you.